Hey, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of The Daily Objective. Welcome to a brand new week. We have a lot to talk about today. And uh, we've got a guy here with us who, you know, I've given him so many different introductions uh, that, quite frankly, I'm out of them at this point. He's from Greece, but now he's in a brand new location that he can share with you if he has that intention. Please welcome Nikos Sotarikapoulos. Yes, thank you. Guess the location. It's never sunny and it keeps raining and uh, it keeps having socialist policies. But anyway, that, I, I hope mean, it's not Portland. <laughs> this could give many results. So today we have a, a difficult topic. So we were chatting before the start of the recording and the conclusion was that we are kind of trying to find the answers here. So we always say, you know, what you're going to get is not like the quote, the objective is lying on the topic. Today, this is even more so because it's a very difficult topic. So what happened is there was this rapper, Wiley, who got into this anti-Semitic rant. He, for 48 hours, he was writing horrible anti-Semitic tweets, things like you know, Jews are snakes, I mean, at that level of stuff. And there was a lot of uh, protest and he got, he got, quote, punished in various ways. So some of the companies he would cooperate said, we don't want anything to do with you. And he got a slap in the hand by Twitter. His account was suspended for some days. Now, there are two issues here that I find interesting and I think we should discuss. The first is if there is a double standard here, which means if you're a racist in general, you're written off by society. If you're an anti-Semite, well, you're not written off by society. You just say, well, that's not cool. Stay on the side for one week. So is it the case that anti-Semitism is, let's say, a more acceptable form of racism today in the public sphere? And if yes, why? And the second question, which for me is even the more difficult one, is how should we, who normally condemn cancel culture and condemn witch hunts, how do we react in a situation where our strongest moral condemnation is 100% justified? So these are the themes of today. So Raka, you, you probably have more ideas on these issues than I do. So why don't you kick us off? Well, it's complicated. And, and to add some complication to this, it's not entirely clear to me if we're actually live streaming right now because the video is not playing from my end. So maybe if Lord Emperor behind the scenes wants to shoot us a message on Zoom or wherever and just let I, us know. I, I am seeing the, I'm seeing the live stream. Well, okay. I mean, it, All, it good. Case, All good. All good. Okay. It's just me. It's usually the case that it's just me. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, let's, uh, before we get to like how to boycott and when to boycott and how Twitter should handle these things, it's, it's complicated when it comes to the Jews because um, we are not individualists in our society. The answer to racism at this point is not individualism. Maybe at one point it was either explicitly or they were sort of grappling with it. So Frederick Douglass, he used to write beautifully about, you know, the, the, you know, the, the man who achieves achievement, you know, the, the enlightenment values used to prevail. They used to be spoken of, but that's not been the case for a, for a long time now. And um, everyone now is part of a group. Everyone needs to, needs to be part of a group. And the question is, um, where does your group stand in the oppression hierarchy? That's, that's the question today. So the Jews on one hand are historically oppressed, but on the other hand, uh, I don't know, a lot of them seem to be pretty successful. A lot of them have skin that looks, you know, a lot like white skin. And, um, you know, is, why, like, how, how, can, how can a Jewish person uh, be, be oppressed by somebody darker and more poor than himself? So that it, 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 it's no longer about uh, the, the content of a man's character or individual merit, individual character. Individualism, it has been in the trash in, in our culture for a long time. So what we have now is a rapper in England. And by the way, he's facing at, like police are investigating. So yeah, uh, you guys, uh, you guys have bigger problems right now than even this guy, than even this guy's tweets when uh, the police are, I mean, they've been doing this for a while, uh, jailing people and prosecuting people for tweets and for speech, but that's a whole nother episode. 
um, he tweeted out saying things about the Jews, saying, um, you know, the Jews, they create enemies and then they make, cry, make themselves victim and this and that. Now, here's the thing. We saw something similar from Nick Cannon last week or a couple weeks ago, an, another rapper slash entertainer. We live in a culture where the mainstream narrative is, you know, white people slash capitalists slash Western man has oppressed indigenous slash noble slash um, dark skinned man through history. And the whole system is in place to oppress whoever you see being oppressed. And so if, and he's saying, you know, these Jews, they're just more white people. And now this is, this has been in the black liberationist culture for a long time. The nation of Islam, the uh, whatever, the Afri pan-Africanists, there's, there's different variants of this sort of black liberation movement or ideology for a long time. That's been saying, Hey, these Jews have been complaining way too loud for a people with so much money and, um, so much stability at this point and uh, and such light skin. I mean, they've got their own country now. They've got their own country and they've got, you know, darker skinned people around them with less money who are, you know, look, they look like they're being oppressed as well. So because we're not individualists and because we're anti-capitalists and because we are, you know, collectivists, it becomes increasingly difficult to see the Jews as victims in that narrative. Now, of course, if we were capitalists, which I think we should be, if we are individualists, which we should be, then we can look at people that are of Jewish descent and say, yeah, okay, most of these people seem pretty decent. They're civilized. They're, they're, you know, they're successful in business. There's no, that's obviously a virtuous thing. And let's, let's encourage everybody, including the Jews, to be more individualistic, to be more capitalist, and to be less collectivistic and less tribalist. But, um, but that's not what, that's not the philosophy that that's in our culture, and that's the problem. Go. You you mentioned tribalism. That's the intellectual poison of tribalism. That it's an an attack on justice, because justice would say, I am judging this particular person for his or her own merits. See what tribalism says. It doesn't. You don't even exist for tribalism. No, I mean not even the people who you live with exist. It's like the history. What did your ancestors did? Or what do people who share the same passport with you do in the Middle East? So th this is, and we're gonna go to the Middle East issue because today antisemitism goes hand in hand with the Palestine issue and I want to say something on that. But before that, this is, what you gave is a very good explanation of these double standards. Brennan O'Neill wrote something on Spike, he said, if you say on Twitter that uh, someone who has a penis is a man, you might get booted off forever from Twitter. But if you say that the Jews are, na are snake, it's okay. And the only possible explanation about that is what you like I mentioned, which is this narrative of identity politics that says we have the intersectional pyramid that we, that based on where you stand, that's how you are treated. And it becomes more and more, it only took two months for these ideas being in the clean air to see that this is by the textbook racism. I mean, I used to call it progressive racial thinking, probably not to piss off people. So in my book, who got, uh, I got into trouble and that's a topic for another debate. You know, I thought, oh, I don't want to offend people. I'll call it racial thinking. No, no, it's racism. That's the definition of racism, that because the group that you're part of is on a specific level, any attacks on you is basically don't matter because you represent your part of the group. Now, how do we react though to that? So there's this hashtag, which is a bit long, so I have to check it. No safe space for Jew hate. So this hashtag uh, encourages people to Jews and allies staging a Twitter walkout for two days. Now, obviously, I'm an ally, although I hate this term. I'm, I'm for justice. I'm not an ally of... Uh, but, 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 I mean, I, I'm very passionate about this issue and probably more than most people because I think there's a big injustice towards how the Jews and Israel is treated. But I'm not going to participate in this walkout uh, because I think that it doesn't help anything. It's kind of similar to this 
uh, where you put a black picture and you say, you know, I'll go and educate myself. No, that's, that's not how to treat it. Yet the big question is, are we actually canceling Wiley these days? And if yes, should we? So for example, the libertarians, usually what they say is, well, we don't want the state to intervene when it comes to discrimination and they're right on that. And because they say that this is, if no, no, no individual rights are violated, there should be no force. And they say, well, the market offers many mechanisms, one of which is boycott. And what I'm really struggling is, but isn't this what cancel culture is? So if it is moral to boycott someone who is very, very immoral, then isn't cancel culture also good? And the problem is that cancel culture sometimes goes to, quote, extremes, which means it's not applied in a just way. But I would be very, very uncomfortable to say that. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm not as rigid as I should be, but I don't want people to lose their jobs, even when they have. So what's, what's happening here? What's the principle based on which we, 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 we take these decisions? Yeah, I, I don't like seeing people lose their livelihood either. Um, I, don't, I don't exactly know. It's kind of like we're in a mixed economy of ideas at this point where, where there's like, you know, it, the lobby system really is just a microcosm of the culture beneath it. It's, um, we've got all these conflicting ideas. On one hand, it's every man by the content of his character. On the other hand, everyone's part of a collective and that's how you should see yourself and that's how we should treat each other. So how do we deal with this? You know, this is, this is, um, I don't exactly know, but, but I guess to answer your question, I do know it's, we need a philosophy that's rational, grounded in reality and consistent with the requirements of living on earth. Of course, I'm talking about like an individualistic philosophy. Uh, we are objectivists, which is a very, very, uh, clean, let's say it's a very complete and sort of self-contained philosophy that does not pit the individual against his so-called collective. It just, it's very careful and very meticulous and it takes you step by step so that you never need to be in these positions. So what we see is um, people saying like, okay, like Jewish people saying like, like, hey, like we're still oppressed, everyone hates us and, um, and uh, we're the indigenous people, like we're the indigenous people of Israel. That's why we have a right to be there. You know, Ayn Rand pointed out that the pro that capitalists capitalism's biggest problem is not its enemies, but its alleged defenders. And I've long said the same about Israel and really you can say the same about the Jews. You could say the same about the individual. His biggest uh, antagonists are these sort of people sticking up for him saying, uh, you know, respect the individual. He, he's, part of, uh, he's part of a lineage of people. He's part of a culture. That's his culture. With the Jews, you know, with Israel, it's, um, oh, they're indigenous. They have a right to be there because their ancestors were there. If, again, if we're individualists, if we're capitalists, if we believe in the um, in the in objective reality and and the 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 rights of man, then we can look at Israel and say, with all of its faults, it is relatively industrial, capitalist, relatively individualistic, and we can move it in the in the individualistic direction to the point where it, where it might even get to a place where it doesn't even need to be called a Jewish state, but it's it would still be a state. Uh, it still is a state worth uh, that it is that it has every right to defend itself against relatively um, uncivilized aggressors. So, so what we need is a philosophy that's grounded in reality, and that's not what we have. So, um, in today's context, you have uh, you have someone like Wiley who said he says, "Look, my people were living in poverty. My people, we have all these problems." Meanwhile, the Jews, everybody knows they're successful. You know, everyone has a Jewish boss. If you if you climb the ladder high enough, he says, you know, my my record label, you know, he might say is, you know, either owned by a Jew or funded by Jews. So then why should I apologize to the Jews? You know what I actually saw on Twitter? A, a, a black so basically, man. Yeah. Sorry, basically class struggle, right? So it's ultimate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ultimately a persecuted. It's a persecuted minority, as Ron said, if my boss is of that particular group, this group is to be attacked. But Absolutely, sorry, I, and, if the Jew, and if the Jews have the, you know, these thriving communities and beautiful homes and community centers and, uh, and, uh, and, and the Jewish country gets donations from all these various, um, from all these Jewish billionaires, like the, these guys are oppressed and there's also um, 
Amer you know, American tax dollars going to Israel as well, but people are rather selective, I think, about that because American tax dollars goes to every ass backward country as well. I would like to cut off all foreign aid, but again, that's another episode. Um, they, uh, you can't, um, I saw, so I saw a guy who, who was, uh, who appeared to be black. He tweeted out a picture of Anne Frank and he says, all my life, I was told to feel sorry for this white racist girl, he said. All, my people are in a, the midst of a Holocaust here in America, he was tweeting. And I'm being told to feel sorry for this, for this Karen, for this Becky, he says, like, like referring, like applying these stereotypes to Anne Frank. And yes, when you think about it, by the standard that there's these systematic racism in place and anyone who's, who's white skinned is automatically racist, then Anne Frank was racist, wasn't she? I mean, what if she had a, what if she had escaped the Nazis and come to America? She'd obviously be a racist, rich, pr presumably, because the Jews tend to find their way. So ultimately, it is the anti-Semitism ultimately is hatred of capitalism. It's ultimately hatred of banking. If um, I saw, I mean, to 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 use another anecdotal. Um, tweet that I saw a, a, a girl who was half black and half Jewish. She says, oh, let me educate you on why the Jews don't deserve hate. She says the Jews only became bankers because during the Middle Ages or whenever they were not able to work in other fields, they were not allowed to. So they had to become bankers. So she said, don't blame the Jews for that. It's not their fault. So she's apologizing for the Jews saying, oh, it's not their fault that they were bankers. And so I will let's blame the bankers blame the bankers for the wrong reasons only yeah. because they're bankers not because yeah. They're, yeah. she said it's not their fault they're they're uh they're they're bankers but, uh, so i will offer you the following the day we stop villa uh villainizing this the, the day we stop hating bankers the day we stop hating finance is the day anti-semitism will miraculously become very very um uh, obscure if not obsolete because the two seem to be uh, intertwined and the more anti-capitalist the culture gets, which we are seeing, the more you will see Jews becoming the um, target of hostility. So I would put that out there to all the people on the right, increasingly becoming anti-capitalist, increasingly hating the finance sector, hating global trade, and obviously to the left, people on the left, many of whom happen to be of Jewish descent who think they can play this intersectional feminism game, but it won't come back to bite them. I'm telling you, this is not gonna work out well for anybody. Most of all, it's not gonna work out for the Jews because history shows the more anti-capitalist, which is to say anti-individualist, which is to say anti-rational we get as a culture, the more the Jews tend to get blamed because the Jews are all too often, well, all, <laughs> rightfully often uh, the very, uh, a very cerebral culture, very, very much into banking, long-term planning and conceptual thinking, which is what these people, what these philosophies are ultimately out to destroy. So two comments here. First, uh, you mentioned the link between anti-capitalism and anti-Semitism. I would encourage people, I don't remember the exact title, just go on YouTube and put Yaron Brook, anti-capitalism, anti-Semitism. He has some very good lectures on that. And another thing, you, you said something very important. The, some of the people who do the biggest damage to Israel, for example, is people who defend it, quote, on a particular completely wrong ground. So I've even heard someone on a libertarian podcast saying, well, we should check your DNA. And based on that, if you have from your ancestors, you can go there. But here's another issue that I hear a lot of people saying. They say the problem is that you people judge Israel, but why don't you judge the Chinese and all that stuff? You criticize the evils of Israel, but no, no. Now, I can get that, but that's not good enough because the thing with Israel is that actually, I think that there is a moral claim that it's a counter defense individual rights and it's under attack, in my opinion, mostly for this reason, because as a culture, it kind of triggers many people who don't believe in these values. So this is how you defend it. You don't say, well, you know, everyone oppresses the weak. Well, Israel also oppresses the weak, but let's first condemn everyone else. That's not, and I'm tempted here to say, you know, what the, what the left says, oh, you know, educate yourself, go read the book. I mean, go read the history of the 
and now we, you know, we can get in trouble with this. But go read the history of the Israel-Arab conflict. And I, I think it's very, very, diff, very, very weird that the default is that, oh, it's obvious that Israel is at the wrong here. And the only reason this is the case is what, as you said, that because the Arabs are perceived as the weak. Now, first of all, historically, this has not been the case. But even if this is the case, why is it that someone being, quote, weak means that they're necessarily right? And again, I think it's Alain Zurno who says in, in, in his book, What Justice Demands, that by that standard, the Taliban are also the weak or, or a mob is also weak. So when you morally judge someone, the question is not who is the weak, who is the strong. The only question is who is standing up for good values. Now, a lot, but a lot of le- yeah. a lot of leftists and libertarians they say the Taliban are are victims of American aggression. I mean, I'm I'm this is a lot of Trump supporters, a lot of people that have moved to the right. They come from that place of thinking that you know uh, that drone striking in Pakistan is a is a war crime, but you know, but it doesn't work the other way around when America's attacked. It, it's our fault anytime we're attacked, but. When it comes to Israel, it's, uh, we, we always need to remind the audience, Israel does it to themselves. Their own intellectuals came up with this in the first place. They compare themselves to Nazis. They hate themselves because they are a Western country full of Western intellectuals, which in today's world means anti-rational, anti-individualistic, and anti-capitalist. So Israel, by that standard, are the bad guy. And no matter what the surrounding cultures do, they are not at fault because they are relatively indigenous and pure and noble the way nature intended people to live by that standard. So um, Israel's biggest problem is its defenders, including its its own residents and professors who come up with a lot of these things. So it, it's- Yeah, and that's my, my number one rebuke, rebu- how is it called? Like mm-hmm. answer to anti-Semites is, well, if your theory is that for the intellectual bankruptcy that we see around them, around us, it's the Jews behind us, well, how do you explain that one of the first victims of this moral relativism will be Israel? But anyway, that's another, that's another discussion. Now, uh, we discuss how to deal with cancel culture and how to, how to properly judge people. Now, in half an hour, at, in 40 minutes, at 7 o'clock, the Iron Run Center UK is running a meetup with two people who have very imp- interesting things to say on this topic with Greg Salmeri, the objectivist intellectual, we uh, hopefully most people already know him, and Brennan O'Neill, the editor of Spike. So I encourage people to go to a London Ayn Rand meetup. There you can see the event. Then you can uh, press attend or something like that. You get the Zoom link. Uh, sent to you, and you can become part of the discussion. Okay, uh, as usual, oh, what are we going to say? Is this topic big enough? And we are three minutes past the 20 minutes mark. So, from me and from my co-host, Raka, thank you very much for being with us. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.